Hey guys, it's Jeff, and today we have updates from Apple on iOS 14. Big updates, including spatial audio for the AirPods. It's a huge release. So today we saw beta 6 release for iOS 14 and also iPadOS 14 as well. Now, as for any other betas, we didn't see anything, but we'll definitely update you guys via social media on if Apple does release some other betas as well. We do have some pretty big news though. For all of you Final Cut Pro users out there, today Apple released a huge update for FCPX and you'll definitely want to check out what's new if you are an avid video editor like myself. So with all that being said, let's move on to beta six, check out what's new and also discuss some of the improvements that have been made from beta four to beta six. Guys, just stop trimming with these super inaccurate things and check out Manscaped please. They have been so kind as to sponsor today's video and Manscaped is changing the way you take care of your personal hygiene down south. Now, two things, it's summertime and for most places it's getting balls hot out there, no pun intended, and you do not want to let things get out of hand down there or else your junk is going to stick. Now, number two is scissors is not in any way something you should be using anywhere near those precious family jewels. That's where the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 comes in. The Lawnmower 3.0 features a safe edge ceramic blade so you don't nick yourself where it hurts the most, but also comes with a 7,000 RPM motor to cut through pretty much anything that gets in its way. Some other super awesome features are the 90 minute runtime so you won't have to worry about charging up your device all too often and the quite visible LED light at the front makes it super easy to see where you're going should you not have enough light. Manscaped also has its own personal hygiene products to keep everything smelling good and clean so even if it's balls hot outside you'll still be smelling good. So guys don't wait any longer to take care of yourself down south and go pick up some Manscaped products today. I suggest starting out with the Perfect Package 3.0 which gives you a wide variety of products to take care of all of your needs and you can even use the promo code TECHREVIEW to get 20% off your order plus free shipping or you can always use that special link down below. So thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the main content. Okay, so before we get into any new features, I did want to say that the experience of beta five was so much smoother than in beta four. There were way fewer issues going on and almost all the problems I've experienced, I was experiencing on beta four were completely resolved. There was one issue with Instagram that wouldn't go away though, and that was the story feature wouldn't allow pictures either from the Instagram app or from your album. Basically the pictures would just go black and you couldn't post them to your story. Now as of beta six, this is still not fixed because this is likely an inconvenience compatibility issue with the Instagram app and iOS 14. So do update at your own risk as pictures via, via the stories will not be possible whatsoever. Now, there also may be a start to some other app incompatibilities going on in the near future. So if you don't have a desire to see uh, the new features and changes found in future betas and you have a stable build as of now, I do recommend that you stay on that specific build to avoid having app incompatibilities like the one we see with Instagram. You do not want to lose your favorite apps. Okay, so after talking about all of that good stuff, let's go ahead and check out the finer details of iOS 14 beta 6 and see what changes and or new features have been added. We already discussed the one with the AirPods, so that is going to be super exciting. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay guys, so we have beta six installed onto our iPhone 11 Pro Max here, and there's actually quite a bit of stuff to talk about with this update. Now first, we'll go into the about screen and see uh, what's new with the information surrounding this beta. Now obviously software version is iOS 14, and we have a new build number, 18A5357E. That is for beta six specifically. Now, if we go down in this menu, we actually see um, quite a bit of change to the modem firmware. Our new modem firmware is 2.00.01. And keep in mind, this is my modem firmware for my specific device. I have an iPhone 11 Pro Max, it's for Verizon. And if you guys have, let's say an iPhone SE or maybe an iPhone XR, 
your modem firmware might be different even though you're on the same build of iOS that I am. So just keep that in mind. Don't be alarmed if uh, your modem firmware has changed or if it's not uh, necessarily the same as mine. It's just because you have a different device and different hardware. But nevertheless, that is a pretty big change um, seeing the modem firmware go from uh, 1.5 something to uh, 2.0.01. So uh, do take note of that change that should improve Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also uh, LTE issues that you might have been having previously in previous betas or previous builds of iOS. Now, to give you guys just a little bit more information about this build, it was 437.9 megabytes. So not a, a huge size update, but very significant enough, and there should be a lot of changes, um, and there are a lot of changes that we actually found. Now, let's go down into the settings app, and this is something I actually noticed in our last build. Um, in the privacy, uh, kind of like in the settings app and the privacy menu here, we have a local network. Not exactly sure what this has to do. I'm, I'm sure that this has to do with uh, maybe like apps that are accessing your local network and it's only uh, kind of like local connections. So um, the Unify network and Unify Protect, that's all local. It doesn't go out to a server and then come back. So I'm assuming that has more to do with like no local network activities and maybe disabling that. I'm not sure why this is in the privacy feature, but yeah, that is there and you can check that out. Um, but from a use case uh, scenario, I don't think most of you are going to be needing to change any of those settings. Now, okay, so moving on to the home screen, and as you can see, I have widgets here, and when I updated, the widgets no longer uh, came up black or blank. So basically, when this would happen, I'd have to go and add the widget completely again, and now you don't have to do that. So it seems like that was a bug in the previous betas, and now that is fixed with beta six. Now, just in case you continue having this issue, all you have to do is go ahead and delete the widget and then go ahead and add it and place it wherever it was again. Um, that was a bug and Apple says it's fixed now, so you shouldn't have those that problem anyway, but that is the fix uh, should you have it in the future, specifically with widgets. Now, something else, else with widgets that happened or occurred, a change that occurred was in the settings app, if you go into screen time, and you go to any downtime or app limits or anything like that, those will now apply to widgets. They actually weren't before, so if you had uh, some sort of parental block or anything um, on the apps, basically the widgets would be kind of uh, absolved of that. So if we go ahead, set downtime to, uh, let's go ahead and set it past what our time is now. So that should activate. As you can see, all my apps are, they're not necessarily locked, they just have downtime feature enabled. And as you can see, uh, the widgets I have here, um, the only one that works is screen time. So I can use screen time to basically access that menu. And if there was a password, I'd have to use the password to get in. Um, but basically all the other widgets in this stack are disabled because of the time limit. And that will be the, the same case for any, any app limits or anything like that. And the app limits will apply to the specific app and widget combo. So maybe if there is an app limit on um, the news app per se, um, that would expire and then the widget would also expire. So everything is working kind of hand in hand here versus uh, when it wasn't in previous builds. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then as you can see, when I turn this off, um, everything goes back to normal. I can access my apps and my widgets accordingly. Now in this update, we saw new splash screens. So um, we saw a welcome to the new Siri splash screen, which gives, just gives you a little bit more information about Siri and what's new. And we also saw uh, more information on the App Store and App Arcade as well. And same thing, these splash screens just kind of give you a little bit more information on what's new with uh, kind of like the new features. And uh, basically it gives you a brief description of what's going on in that specific app. We also saw this one for shortcuts. It showed up uh, previously in um, beta five, I believe. And now we're seeing it again in beta six. Uh, from what I saw, there was nothing new in shortcuts, but they may just be kind of like recycling these splash screens just to uh, kind of inform you guys of what's going on in these apps. The last one that we saw is actually what's new in maps. And this actually gives a very good description of what's new in maps. Uh, previously, we never saw what specifically was new in the Maps app. But basically you can see we have cycling navigation now um, available and that's basically in the major cities. Um, curated guides, those have actually gotten a lot better in the Maps app and then speed cameras. So you can see uh, speed cameras and red light cameras along your route uh, just to kind of uh, ensure that you're not running any lights or anything like that.
like that. So um, there's actually a lot of new features in the Maps app that you definitely want to check out. So if you have betas installed, do check out some of these new features. They're actually really, really cool. Um, but do be aware that for most of these features, they're in major cities like LA and New York, Chicago, everything like that. Um, but they will be coming to other kind of like smaller cities in the near future once Apple uh, kind of curates everything to uh, worldwide and uh, getting more into finer detail in these smaller towns and cities. Now, another thing that I noticed in the control center specifically, if we go into the settings app and then we go down to the control center and access the uh, home controls in the control center, I noticed that these kind of like animations are just a little bit different. Um, they're a little bit slower. Um, so yeah, it just looks very interesting. If we go ahead and kind of access all of these, they just look just slightly different from what we were seeing before, specifically with the animations. Um, so it's having a little bit of a spaz attack because I accidentally wanted to connect to my HomePod there, um, which I did not want to do. But basically, um, these animations are just a little bit different from what we were seeing before. Um, I do not have these enabled simply because I don't have any favorites because I don't really use the Home app. But if you guys do use the Home app, I would imagine that all of these uh, little icons here that you can fill with your favorite uh, kind of home app uh, functions will have that same sort of animation change to them. So definitely check that out if you guys are using this feature. Now, some other improvements I really wanted to point out to you guys was actually found in the Translate app. It looks like this app is working a lot better than what we were seeing before. Uh, things are working a lot more smoothly, the translations are a lot more accurate, and the dictation is faster. So let's, let me give you just a slight uh, kind of example on dictation. So if I press that dictation button, everything works a lot faster than what it was previously doing in previous betas. So as you saw, um, the betas changed to betas and the dictation was just a lot more accurate. In previous builds, the, that betas actually would stay betas. So uh, things are working a lot better. And for any of you that speak Spanish, I'm sure that this would be recognizable to you at least, at the very least. Um, and the translation is just a lot more accurate. I've also noticed that when you use translation on your device, so that being all the downloaded languages here, um, they're a lot more accurate as well. And then also it's working a little bit faster for specifically these downloaded translations that you want to have offline. Okay, so when we went from beta four to beta five, we basically saw no speed improvement at all because Apple simply needed to just get everything working the way it should be in regards to app crashes and a slow UI. Now in beta six, we are starting to see that performance increase again, but only just slightly. In our test, we saw a slight improvement of two to 3% faster performance in the CPU. And then looking at the GPU, we saw a solid 3% increase in our benchmarks. Now, as far as that translating to visually faster performance, I actually see none, but it is nice to know that at least in the background, things could be working a little bit more efficiently. Now, speaking of efficiency, I do want to discuss battery life. Battery life for me has been a hit or miss subject when it comes to iOS 14. I've noticed that on some betas, it's really poor, and then on others, it's really, really good. All in all though, I've seen a solid 4% decrease in battery health after hopping onto these betas, which is the fastest decrease in battery health I've experienced in that period of time. So when you think about upgrading, consider that you might have poorer battery performance and this update may significantly affect your battery health. Hopefully these issues are resolved by the official release though and everything is back to normal because the battery life and battery health in iOS 13 was really, really good. Okay guys, so that was iOS 14 beta 6. And of course, if you have any comments and or questions, you are more than welcome to leave those in the comment section down below. And I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Now, if you guys are considering hopping onto the betas or uh, you know installing them onto your daily drivers, I would say to proceed with caution and do expect just a few drawbacks as this is still a beta. I personally have the beta installed onto my daily driver and I'm not uh, completely dissatisfied with it. So I will say that I would personally personally install it at this point if I wanted to check out any new features and or changes in iOS 14. 
Okay, so that was today's video. And just in case you didn't hear before, there is also a release to iPadOS 14 to check out uh, just in case you have an iPad running iPadOS 14. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you want to see more content in the near future, definitely get subscribed, hit that like button, and also hit that bell button to get notifications on when any new content is released. You can also check me out on Twitter at Jeff Tech Review, and we have a new Instagram at Tech Review Media that you can check out as well. Also, one more thing to check out is the new updated podcast where I go in depth into some tech topics that we don't discuss here on the channel. That will be linked down below if you want to check that out. But anyways, guys, I hope to see you in some future content or in some uh, social media platforms sometime soon. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.